All right, this video is going to be about hypothesis testing where we use what's called the traditional method. There's going to be two methods, a traditional method and the p-value method. The next video we will look at the p-value. So a reminder about what hypothesis testing is. So we will be given a claim or we even make our own claim about the population and we are going to prove that if the, the claim is justified or not based on a certain significance level. So let's go over the steps to actually doing the hypothesis test using the traditional method. And then we'll do a couple examples after that. So the first step is to read through the claim. And then we're going to decide if the claim is about the population mean or a population proportion. If the claim is about a population proportion, we're going to find the sample proportion. To find the sample proportion, remember, it will be p hat is equal to x over your n, where n is your total sample size and x is how many are in the proportion. A lot of times the sample proportion will be given to you, but sometimes it will not. If our claim is about a population mean, we need to check to see if we have a population standard deviation in that where we use the z-score or a sample standard deviation where we would need to use a t-score. After we get what our parameter is, we can move on to step two. So step two is to write the null and the alternative hypothesis. All right, so what the null hypothesis is would be H0, and the alternative hypothesis is H1. Our last video that we talked about was the introduction to hypothesis testing, and the most detail in that was about how to write the null and the alternative hypothesis. All right, that is it for step two, so let's move on to step three. Step three. Three is going to be to determine the significance level. Usually your significance level, your alpha will be like a 0 0.05 or maybe a 0 0.01. Those are commonly used. Those relate to a 95% confidence level or a 99% confidence level. So after we determine the significance level, we are going to, going to draw those on a normal curve. Okay, and that significance level is going to be the percentage that is in my tails. So if we have a two-tail test, that means together, if I, my alpha was 0 0.05, then the, the area in one tail would be 0 0.025. Okay, that would be if we had a two-tail test. If we had a one-tail test that is to the left, so a left-tail test, and my significance level is 0 0.05, then all of that percentage goes into one tail, and a right-tail test, all of that percentage would go into the right tail. So once you figure out your significance level and where it lies on a normal curve or a bell-shaped distribution, we can move on to step four. So step four is to find the critical value that relates to the significance level. So you're gonna find either a t-score if you have the population standard deviation and you're finding the mean, or you're finding a proportion, or the t-score if you have to find the population mean but you do not know the standard deviation of the population. So that is just pretty much like confidence intervals, where you just find the corresponding t-score that goes with the significance level. All right, so step five is to find the test statistic. So we have a different test statistic for each thing that we're trying to find. So if we're trying to find the proportion, the test statistic is equal to p hat, so your sample, proportion minus P, which is the P found in the claim, divided by the square root of P times 1 minus P, so those are all your claim P values, 
over your n. So that is your test statistic for your proportion. That z is different than your z found from your significance level. Okay, the next one we have is if we know the population standard deviation and we're testing a claim about the mean, then the test statistic will be z is equal to x bar, so the average from your sample, minus your mean, which is the mean from your claim, divided by your population standard deviation over the square root of n, your sample size. So hopefully those two look somewhat familiar. We use those when we were finding probabilities of sample means and we also use them with confidence intervals. All right, the last test statistic is for the mean with an unknown population standard deviation. Instead of a z-score, it will be a t-score. And that t is going to be equal to x bar minus your population mean, so the mean from your claim, over your sample standard deviation, that is an s, not a 5, your sample standard deviation over the square root of your n. If you look at the two that are both about the mean, they're the same formula, except for instead of a population standard deviation, the other one is a sample standard deviation. So once you find your test statistic, you now have a critical value, which is a z-score with your significance level, and you have a z-score now that is compared or found using the test statistic formula. We can then move on to step six. So we only have step six and step seven, so we're almost done with the steps here. Step six is that we are going to compare the test statistic to the critical region. If the test statistic is in the critical region, we reject the null hypothesis. If the test statistic is not in the critical region, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so what that looks like here is if we do have a chart and we found our uh, z-score, our critical value. If our test statistic is in this critical region formed by the z-score, then that's why we, where we will reject the null hypothesis, because this right here represents the null. If our critical value lies in the null region, we failed to reject the null hypothesis because it is in the null region. Okay. So once we get through step six, we can actually make our conclusion, which would be step seven. So the, so the last step says to use the flowchart to make a conclusion about the original claim. So I'm going to put a picture of what the flow chart looks like. So the final wording would look like this. You start and then you ask yourself, does the original claim contain equality? And if the answer is yes, you follow the flow chart to yes. And if it's no, you follow it to no. The next question you'll ask is, did we reject the null? Did we reject H naught? If the answer is yes, then you will answer it. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim, and then you state your original claim. Or there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of your claim, and then you state your claim. Um, the sample evidence can support the claim, and then there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So each of those would be the wording based off of what your original claim was, whether or not you rejected your null hypothesis, okay, and then you have that. So let's try one problem and we'll see how that goes. All right, so a random sample of 1,000 newborn babies found that the mean sample weight was 8.21 pounds. Assuming the population standard deviation is known to be 1.4 pounds, 
test the claim that the average weight of all babies is greater than eight pounds. So let's go through our steps here. So our first step, we're gonna read through the problem which we just did, and now we need to decide what our parameter is going to be. So since we are testing a claim that the average weight of all babies is greater than eight pounds, that is our claim right there. So the average weight, that is a mean. So my claim is that my mean is going to be greater than eight pounds. All right, <clears throat> we do know the population standard deviation. So this is going to be a Z score, not a T score. So that's step one. So step two then would be to write the null hypothesis about the mean and our alternative hypothesis about the mean. So the null hypothesis is always going to be that the mean equals eight pounds. The alternative hypothesis is going to be whatever the claim is. So the mean is greater than, I wrote that wrong on here, so the mean is greater than eight pounds. So that would be step two. You have your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. So step three is we're going to determine a significance level. Since a significance level is not given, we're going to assume 0 0.05. <clears throat> if they don't give you one, that's what I always recommend, just using 0 0.05. So that means here, we're gonna have on a chart, we have our null hypothesis, is equal to 8, but our alternative is the mean is greater than 8. So that means the greater than is going to be the greater than region. That would be 0 0.05. Okay. So that would be step 3, just figuring out our significance level and where it lies on the graph. So the next thing in step 4 would be to find the critical value. We decided that it was a T or Z score because we knew the population standard deviation. So we want to find the Z score that corresponds to a significance level of 0 0.05. So at the bottom of the Z score table, you will notice that there are some areas that are commonly used. So we have an area of 0 0.05 on the z-score table, and that will give you the z-score. It actually shows you negative 1.645. However, because we want the area to the right, you'd use the positive, not the negative. So there is our z-score. So now on to step five. Step five says find the critical value or sorry, step five says find the test statistic. So we have our critical value here, and now we need to find a test statistic so we can compare the two. I should say that that critical value is Z alpha so you don't confuse them. So Z alpha is 1.645. We're going to find now Z. So the formula for the test statistic is X bar minus your mean over your standard deviation over the square root of n. And I am going to plug all those values in here. <clears throat> you found your x bar was 8.21. Your mean is your mean of your claim, because that's the population. Your standard deviation is 1.45, and you're going to divide by the square root of your sample, which is 1,000. All right, so if I do the calculations, I did them earlier, you get point or 4.74. So there's our test statistic. All right, so we are going to compare now our test statistic uh, to the critical value. So 4.4 or 4.74, if this is a number line and I had 1.64, 4.74 would be about right there. So think to yourself, does this value lie in the critical region or outside the critical region? Well, hopefully to you it is obvious that it is in the critical region. And since it is in the critical region, we reject the null.
So now let's make a conclusion based off of that. All right, so I pulled up this picture because we have all of our information and now here's our flowchart to help us word the final conclusion. So did my original claim contain equality? No, my original claim was greater than eight pounds, which is not equality. So no. Then we're going to say, did we reject the null? Yes, we rejected the null. So that means this is how we are going to word our final conclusion. So my final claim, I just wrote it out here, is going to say that the sample data support the claim that the average weight of babies is greater than eight pounds. So then this right here would be our final conclusion of our hypothesis test.